Hey everybody, Jay here. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are just joining us, my name is Jay. We live on a beautiful 18 acre homestead here in New Hampshire. And uh, yeah, we are going to do the next couple videos. We're going to do some maintenance. Uh, I'm going to show you how to get any small engine running with this one simple word that you probably will never forget after today's video. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. <music> Alright everybody, if you like that intro, that's just a glimpse of what we do here on the homestead. We do a ton of stuff. I've been a mechanic by trade my whole life. I used to buy and sell cars, bikes, boats, snowblowers, weed whackers, whatever, you name it. Um, I've worked on it probably. So anyways, the one word that you need to remember is facts. Now unlike the mainstream ma uh, media, I believe in facts. <laughs> I'm probably going to get some grief for that. People are probably cracking their knuckles right now getting ready to type but anywho if you weren't offended by that we're going to talk about fuel air compression and spark facts if you get those four things on any small engine probably nine out of ten times you can get it running so what i have here is a uh probably 30 year old pressure washer this is an old school pressure washer that my father gave me hasn't ran in over a dozen years and we're going to go through this thing top to bottom checking all those four things plus a few other things and yeah we're gonna get it running so stick around i don't know how long this video will be i don't know how many series it'll be but it should be fun so let's roll right into it all right so this is a briggs and stratton 11 horsepower uh motor attached obviously to a pump this is a this is a high power pressure washer that we are going to actually uh, pressure wash our house with but Fuel air compression spark. Now generally the first thing I start with, if I have a motor that I haven't heard run or has been sitting for a while, the first thing you want to deal with is compression and let's get right into that. Alright folks, again no particular order but you want to start with compression, that is the health of your internal engine. If you have an engine that has no compression, it doesn't matter if you have spark fuel or uh, anything else, chances are it's not going to run. So compression is where the piston uh, compresses the fuel in the air that gets ignited by your spark plug. So motors need compression to run. So this motor has been sitting for probably, I think my father said the last time we ran it, I think I was in high school. So well over, you know, 15 years ago. So what we're going to do is we're going to carefully uh, pop off our plug wire. We're going to break our um, spark plug free and we're going to spray some oil down into that cylinder and let it soak. And then we're going to move on to some other stuff. But a good indication before you uh, do anything is check your spark plug. Hopefully that's in focus there. That looks like a clean, nice and uh, uh, like a white, uh, lightish white, grayish color is what you want. Uh, I'll attach an overlay of uh, a spark plug picture there, uh, what you want. But that plug looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and uh, what I do is I just stick that on there, put it to the side. Now let's get some oil down that cylinder. Now before you uh, take your spark plug out, if you had any type of uh, air compressor, you want to blow away any crap that's been sitting around the spark plug threads because you don't want it to fall in your motor. Uh, not a paid endorsement, but what I've used for years and years and years to help loosen up motors is PB Blast. So take a little bit of PB Blast, probably a, maybe a three, four, five second squirt. Again, not a big deal. You don't have to go crazy. Um, and what you want to do now is actually let's take our plug out um, you want to slowly pull your motor over very slowly you want to move that PB blaster around in that cylinder now this motor hasn't ran for years so like I said we want it to we want that PB blast to work in every which way we want to nurse this back to health so do this a few times all right, so we sprayed a little bit more PB Blast in there. We want to put our spark plug back in, just kind of hand tight for now. You can leave your boot off. But anyway, pull the motor over slowly. What that's going to do is that's going to compress that PB Blast, and that's going to kind of push it past the rings a little bit if they're a little bit stuck from sitting. So I'll feel it as I'm pulling it once my piston gets up to the compression stroke. Yeah, right there. I don't know if you could even hear that, but... So that's good for now. We're going to let that sit. Um, we're going to let that sit and soak. And now we're going to move on to something else. 
All right, so the next thing motors need to run is uh, air. Again, part of the equation, fuel, air, compression, spark. Now, compression in cylinder and piston, we just took care of with the TV blast. So um, what we're going to do is, is take this air cleaner off. Again, I don't know if there's any, if any rats, if anything, have made a nest in there. Um, one thing I am going to do is get a little, get a little bowl here and put, uh, put our caps in just so we don't lose anything. So let's have a look here at our air filter. So inspect your cover, make sure nothing, you know, no rat's nest are living in there. But this, um, this air filter looks pretty good. So let's go ahead, pop this wing nut off here and just take a peek, make sure nothing, uh, nothing is living in there. All right, so we got that little wing nut off again, put in our little dish. We're gonna pop this, pop this air cleaner off. If you peel back the pre-filter here, this looks pretty good. This must have been relatively new um, the last time it ran. A good tip of advice now that you got your air cleaner off is uh, get some PB Blast down in the carburetor here if you can, depending on the style style of carburetor. That will help uh, loosen up things in our carburetor because that's where we're going to move on to next. So uh, here's our choke here. So you want to make sure your choke is open and do that. And again, you can also give it a couple... Like I said earlier, give it a couple extra pulls to try to suck in that PB blast through that carburetor. All right, folks, so moving right along, we just covered this back up. It's the next day, but uh, just to recap, we oiled us our cylinder, we pulled it over, we oiled inside our carburetor, pulled it over a little bit. All the throttle linkage and all that stuff feels loose. Uh, next thing we want to do is fuel. So this is our fuel cap here. Um, it looks like there's some fuel. Oh man, <laughs> that stuff smells old as sin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain this fuel here. We're gonna find out if this has a fuel shut off. This fuel line is extremely hard, so we're gonna change all that too. So let's go ahead and see if there's a fuel shut off uh, here on our tank at all. All right, folks, so our gas tank's up here. This is our fuel line that runs into the side of the carburetor here. We're gonna go ahead and um, take that hose clamp off and there's a fuel valve, fuel shut off under the tank. I'm hoping that the fuel is off, but uh, when I pop this line off, we'll find out, won't we? Um, so go ahead, move that clip, kind of wiggle this old solidified gas line off. All right, so nothing's coming out, uh, which leads to two things, either the fuel was shut off and this was ran dry, which we could get lucky, so we're gonna have to find out. So now let's pop, let's flush the tank, uh, let's flush the gas out of this tank. All right, so I'm gonna reach around to the other side and open that, um, that fuel valve. If gas comes out of there, it should be in pretty good shape. Oh, yeah, okay. We got some fuel spillage. Let's get our... Uh... So that's good. So our, this was stored with the fuel off, so hopefully that carburetor's in okay shape. All right, we're gonna put a little... put a little jug there. And I wish you could smell that old gas. That stuff is nasty. All right, so we're gonna change out the fuel on. Like I said, I already loosened up. There's two clamps on the bottom of this gas tank here. Um, so let's see if we can get this tank out peacefully, which I think, I think we should be able to. free all right folks now that we got our gas tank out uh off of our uh, machine you want to take a light and peek in this tank looks actually pretty dang good inside there's no rust uh just had that old this thing reeks of gas but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our cap actually what we can do is see this cap here there's a little rubber o-ring in there obviously this machine has been sitting for years just want to put some put some oil on that. That'll help obviously seal seal up our gas tank. But 
This is our fuel line here, so we're gonna change out the fuel line. So literally all you gotta do is, is just take this off here, lay it out, and cut a new one. We're gonna move, we're gonna reposition this filter because this was kind of hidden. We're gonna put it more towards the carburetor side. So yeah, let's go ahead and show you that real quick. All right, so to me, this looks like quarter inch fuel line. And I think this section here that we have, wow, that'll work perfect. Trim it a little bit, but uh, should be good to roll. So what we're gonna do is again, we're going to relocate our fuel filter when it's back on to the unit, but we're going to go ahead and slide our new gas line on. Actually, this side's a little bit more square. We're going to slide our new gas line on and then put a hose clamp on that. All right, maybe you can notice we have some light rusting around where those bands were. So actually, what we're going to do is to help mitigate that uh, rust, this being a pressure washer, we're just going to take some light grease and we're gonna rub grease on where those metal bands wrap around. Um, this isn't gonna hurt anything. This is just, obviously there's a uh, little bit of a vapor barrier that's going on between the, uh, the bands and the gas tank. So a little bit of grease will go a long way. So yeah, let's go ahead and finish that up and we'll slide the tank on. All right, so we got our nice greased gas tank back on. We're gonna go ahead and maneuver this Maneuver this back into place, wherever that may be. And yeah. All right, let's tighten her down, hook the fuel line up. All right, so here we go, folks. As you can see here, uh, our fuel line will hook up right here, but we're gonna splice in an inline fuel filter right about uh, here, just so we can see uh, what's going on, making sure that uh, if we have a clog in the tank or if that fuel on and off valve clogs up, at least we'll know visually, with a visual aid of what's going on. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna put our inline filter right about here. Uh, so we're gonna just go ahead and cut, um, cut our fuel line right about here. That should be, I'll go a little bit back. That should be quite all right. So now, if you look at this fuel filter here, there's an arrow, it's got a flow direction, so you wanna make sure that you uh, put that flow arrow in the correct, when they mean flow, that means coming from the, uh, coming from the gas tank. Flowing from obviously your gas tank to your motor. So now, what we can do is, is slide our other hose clamp on this end and then we can trim we can trim our uh, gas line to fit be a little bit more conservative you could always cut more you can't can't put it back so if we if we dry fit that I think that looks pretty good nothing is rubbing on the motor nothing's got a uh, there's no ridiculous bends in it so yeah let's go ahead and tighten down Tighten down these hose clamps, that should be good. So what I recommend doing um, is run a two-stroke mix when you first get a, a machine going. Uh, that's gonna give some extra lubricant, especially this machine hasn't ran in about 20 years. So this is just some Echo Red Armor, 50 to one. We're just gonna put like a quart in there, give or take, maybe half a, what is this? This is 12, 32 ounces, so maybe half of this. We'll put in there uh, just again give it some lubrication because this motor hasn't ran in years It's definitely gonna smoke when we start it because we have all that PV blast in there All right now that we're nearing close to getting it started. I checked the oil prior, but the oil actually looks very Very clean. I'm starting to think that we This was serviced before he uh, Before he parked it that's what I'm thinking. Again, I got this from my dad. So that oil is good. Let's go ahead and turn our fuel on, check for leak. This is why I like the clear fuel line. Um, I'm gonna open the gas now, and you, you should see that start to fill with that clear Echo Red Armor. Oh yeah, look at that good stuff. Red juice. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to uh, check is spark and that's real simple so again just take your spark plug out uh rest it you know on them on something steel <clears throat> and that's our kill switch i'm pretty sure oh yeah hopefully i can zoom in you can so we got good spark there so we don't have to uh 
we don't have to investigate any further on that end. So let's go. We checked our oil. We we replaced our fuel line. Let's go ahead and give this a run. Now, one thing we want to check before we run this is our oil and our uh, pump. So there's a little notch there. The oil's to the top of the notch. I would imagine that would be full. I will verify that before I go any farther. But um, let me just wipe that off and check it again. So I'll put that in there. Yeah, oil's right to the top. So I think that's okay. I'll double check, but that should be uh, should be good to roll on that front. All right, you got. You'll have to excuse the background noise. My father-in-law is heat blown, but we got to hook up some water now. We're gonna just get the air out. You don't want to start these with no air in it and no water in it, but I think that seems all right. Um, let's go ahead and unravel our hose a bit, and then we'll start it. All right, well here goes nothing. Turn our gas back on. First start in at least probably 15 years. Well, that's a good sign. I think that's a wrap. This machine has about four or five different uh, attachments on the front of it uh, for the end of the gun. One of them is a super thin nozzle. It shoots probably about 50 feet. I wish I had it on camera, but I was playing around with the nozzles as it's running. But hope you enjoyed that video. Again, if you took anything out of that fuel, air, compression, spark, facts. Get your facts right for any small engine. Nine out of 10 times, uh, it'll get it running. Now, if you have all those four things and it's still not running, you have other issues at hand, but those are the four basics. So again, I'm Jay. Hope you appreciate that hopefully relatively short video of uh, just doing basic maintenance, fuel, air, compression, spark. Check all those four things, guaranteed for the most part, nine out of 10 times you have a running motor. So like I always say, please hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you think. Our next task is gonna be to wash the house. Uh, and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that video. I know I love wrenching on stuff. It's not the most popular stuff on the channel, but I enjoy it anyway. So thanks for tuning in guys. I uh, really appreciate it. Leave a comment below and yeah, we'll see you on the next video.